Hi, I'm Kevin McKenzie. I'm a ZOS test architect and I've been testing ZOS for the past 20 years. I'm here to introduce something new to help our clients do their own system level testing. I built this as a result of problems clients saw a few years ago in the middle of the pandemic when people decided to really get into active trading. It was a time of stonks and diamond hands and rockets to the moon. Financial services companies were seeing levels of new account creation and trading that they'd never seen before. And their end-to-end -end systems weren't scaling the way they'd expected. They asked a partner with IBM to figure out what they could do differently to find these issues earlier. In talking to them, the two biggest problems they had were, first, financial concerns over the cost of doing this testing, and second, the technical ability to do the testing in a structured, repeatable way. I'm not a salesperson, but IBM did introduce the Z-Burst offering recently to address the cost issue. With Z-Burst, the cost of additional MIPS for doing load stress testing is cut dramatically. But there's still the issue of doing the testing and knowing what sort of things to test. That's where the Chaos Toolkit comes into play. The term Chaos Testing originated at Netflix with the Chaos Monkey, which would randomly kill things in their production environment, the thought being that this would incentivize developers to build resiliency into their programs. We've been doing that sort of testing in ZOS for longer than I've been here, but we call it system testing. Netflix chose a much cooler name. The basic idea of chaos testing is to introduce what they call friction into a system and to see what happens. This can involve creating resource shortages, introducing delays, or removing parts of the infrastructure entirely. The Chaos Toolkit is an orchestration platform for doing testing of distributed systems. It has the advantage of being inherently cross-platform as long as extensions for that platform exist. There wasn't one for ZOS, so I decided to see how hard it would be to write one. I do want to emphasize at the beginning that this is a demonstration of what's possible. We have a lot of ideas for what we could do. but We've had a habit in the past of building things that we think our clients need and not what they actually need, and we're trying to stop doing that. So we really need input from clients over the sorts of things you'd like to be able to do in your testing, what sort of access you have to your systems, how you access your systems, and things like that, so we understand what you need to build. The Chaos Toolkit is written in Python and it will run anywhere Python will run. I'm going to do this demo on a Mac. If you have Windows, I suggest using the Windows subsystem for Linux to do this, as Python and native Windows sometimes interact in mysterious ways. I've already created a directory and a virtual environment for demonstration purposes. You'll need to be using Python 3.7 or above. To install the Chaos Toolkit, you issue the command pip install chaos toolkit. And then to install the ZOS extension, you issue the command pip install chaos toolkit ZOS. Now you can run an experiment. I'm going to pull up a sample chaos toolkit experiment file so you can see what it looks like. A chaos toolkit experiment consists of a couple of parts. First, you declare a steady state hypothesis. This is what should remain true before you run the experiment and after you run the experiment. This requires a probe. Right now, the only probe that the ZOS extension supports is checking to see if ZOS is responding. After the steady state hypothesis, you declare methods. This is the friction that you're going to introduce into your system. Right now, the extension supports configuring processors offline and online. If you don't give it a number, it will configure them all offline. Next, you can specify rollbacks, meaning the things that you need to do to undo the changes that you made when introducing friction. This is optional, but certainly recommended, so we're going to configure all of the processors back online. Finally, secrets. This is where you specify any logon credentials or anything similar that you need. And this is where things start to get complicated for ZOS because we offer a number of ways to do the same thing. For example, if I want to issue system commands, you can do that using a TN3270 console, SDSF, ZOSMF, ZOAU, ZOE, or through the HMC API. Right now, the extension supports issuing system commands through the HMC API or using ZOAU after connecting to the system via SSH. We need to implement more methods, as I know different clients have different security requirements that may allow connecting via one of these methods but not one of the others but I need to do some more thinking about how to handle all the interactions involved. In this case, I'm going to use SSH and ZOAU. In order to prevent exposing my username and password in the source code for this experiment, I've set these values as environmental variables. An important thing to note here is that this experiment requires almost no knowledge of ZOS. System programmers can do this too, but if you've got site reliability engineers who want to start involving ZOS in their end-to-end -end testing, they can use the toolkit to do so without needing to learn much about ZOS. And if you've got a multi-cloud setup with front-end systems in AWS or Azure or IBM Cloud or wherever else, in your systems of record or in your data center on IBM Z, 
You could have one of your steady state requirements involve the front end systems processing throughput or whatever else you can measure using the probes that those extensions provide. So at this point, we've installed the Chaos Toolkit and the ZOS extension, we've created an experiment, and we're ready to get started. I'm running this in verbose mode so you can see more of what's actually happening behind the scenes. everything succeeded. So that's what you'll see as feedback from the toolkit. Let's take a look at the system log so you can see what happened on the system. So first there was a check to see that the system was responding. Next the dm equals core command to look at the CPU configuration. Next the zip start being taken offline. Then a check again to see if the system was still responding. And finally the zips are configured back online as the rollback action. So that's the toolkit and the extension. As I said earlier this was something I built to see if it was possible and we really want to make this more useful to our clients. There are a lot of things we could expose to remove resources and inject friction, either at the ZOS level or the program product level, but we need to understand what you'd actually find useful. If you're interested in being a sponsor user, please get in touch with me. If you have problems, feel free to open a GitHub issue. And if you'd like to contribute, pull requests would be welcomed as long as all of the IP requirements are satisfied.